Hi everyone, I'm Jen Liddy of Jen Liddy Coaching and Development, and if you've been following along, you know that I've been interviewing entrepreneurs in our community, in my community, who have taken the leap from a place of where they probably were a little comfortable in a job, or they were feeling a little meh about their job, and they they wanted something more to feel fulfilled and excited about, and then they've done this hard thing of taking the leap. And I know that so many of you out there have something that you want to bring to life, but you're not sure how, or you're afraid of what it looks like, and so I'm interviewing real life people who are telling you how they did it. One of those people is my friend Tyler Cagwin, who I know from lots of different places. Um, he and his wife are uh, this amazing couple. Tiffany owns a yoga studio, at O Yoga, and Tyler is an amazing yoga teacher, but I never get to his class because it's too big. <laughs> um, and, and Ty has a full-time job that he, he wanted something more, and so he, he dabbled in a whole bunch of things, and he's recently found this thing that has kind of just exploded. So I want to introduce Tyler Cagwin, who is the owner of Nostalgia Chocolates. He's co-owner with his wife. His role is kind of the forward-facing role of the business. He does, um, he's the chief chocolate maker, but he also does a lot of the um, forward-facing stuff like branding and connecting with people. And um, his wife does some of the back-end stuff, which he'll tell you about. But the reason I really want you to listen to Tyler is that he's been searching for a long time for the thing that made him feel like, so I'm excited to hear this story as much as I'm excited to share it with you. So thank you, Tyler, for being here and taking, You're welcome. taking your time to do this. Yeah, so my pleasure. I want you to tell everybody briefly who you are and kind of where you were and what your dream is now to where you want to go. Well, I think probably the, the easiest place to start from, and we'll condense the story, but is going back about six years ago when I met my now wife. And I've I had been working for my family for third well yeah, it's I'm in my 13th year working for them and when I met Tiffany I that was six or seven years into the job and it the family situation is challenging to say the least so um, there's a lot of dynamics that you know it's kind of like those shows you see on TV it's kind of how it is and you know for a long time I kind of got caught up in the up in the politics of the whole thing, you know, like who do you listen to and where is this job going to take me? Is there a future in it? Will it be here? Um, you know, it was a company that growing up, uh, I always, you know, my, my mom worked there for most of my childhood growing up and I always really believed in it. I thought it was so cool that we had this family business and, and I still do. I think it's amazing. Um, but as time has gone by and I've made changes in my life to kind of separate from getting caught up in the, the political situation or getting absorbing other people's anger and frustration and that attitude, um, my life started to kind of switch. And over time, Tiff and I have talked about, you know, like what is what what is our life going to look like? And I've watched her run a wonderful yoga studio or two of them now. And I think there's always been like the, a healthy amount of this, but a, a amount of jealousy in how she does it and that, you know, she has a beautiful company that she um, has created and believes in and all that. And I had started to kind of lose focus on that for my job. And I, through working with you for, I don't know, a year and a half, I guess it was, um, you know, I, I really recommitted and found a new, a new energy in that job. Um, and then some other things happened and that, you know, kind of the wind was taken out of my sails, so to speak. So I reached a point where I, in the last year or two while working with you part of that time, I needed to start to try to figure out like, is there something out there that I could do on my own? Like I, I know I could find another job, mm -hmm. but for me, most of it was going to be a, a lateral move, which is totally fine. Cause there would have been, you know, if I could increase my enjoyment of my job, certainly that's a big step forward. But, um, as far as pay goes, a lot of it would have just been lateral and it would have taken away some of the flexibility that I have currently in my day to day, which after 13 years, one can imagine becomes pretty important to you. So, um, so for about two years, and so I, I just started to kind of put my, like, think about it. And I started listening to podcasts and then started thinking about all the people around myself who are doing like you, my wife, like who have left other things and were just like, I'm doing this, like game on. 
And so through that, I started my own podcast and I did that simply because mo- really self-serving reasons. I wanted to have access and a reason to speak to people who were chasing their dreams or doing important things in the community or, or any number of reasons, but it was just people who were inspirational people. Mm-hmm. And so over the course of time, I thought about like, okay, well, maybe I could open up a clothing store that was mm. geared just towards CrossFit athletes. I well, this idea, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that was in the end, a horrible idea <laughs> and, uh, and, a, a acquaintance of mine, you know, in a nice way sort of said that. So ideas like that kept popping into my mind. And then I, I don't remember what podcast it was, but I listened to one and the person said, um, if an idea doesn't stick in your mind for, I don't know, more than three weeks or a month and like you're really, and you're not passionate about it after that point, then it's not an idea you want to follow. So, you know, the ideas kind of came and went, but at the end of the day, I, if I was going to do something, I wanted it to be something that I could create and I'm not artsy. I'm not, um, like my dad's a really amazing woodworker and I, I would love to be that. I'm not. Um, and so, Long story short, this chocolate thing popped into my mind. Um, there were some seeds planted before, but when we got back from the yoga retreat re- Tiffany and I led in Costa Rica last January, um, we met a young couple down there who were making chocolate. And we came back and I was kind of like, wow, like if that couple can do it in Costa Rica, like maybe this is something that I could do. And so Tiff was in New York City for a yoga um, um, training and I called her and she was, and it was, I don't know, I think we were in the middle of a blizzard here. And I said, I want to do this. And she's like, okay, um, is there a course or anything you can take? And I said, well, I don't know. Let me research. So I, I Googled um, like bean to bar chocolate making courses, I think. And I found a online university or uh, not university, but online school, I guess, out of Vancouver, which is a pretty famous one, Ecole Chocolat. And I took, they had a bean to bar, like chocolate making class uh, that you could take online. That w- and it was more focused on the industry. We did a lot of chocolate tasting, mm. which come to find out is an extremely important aspect to this whole thing, which is, you know, a huge plus. But, um, so I took the course and as I was going through that, I just kept getting more and more kind of enthralled with in the history of chocolate. Um, like how much of it has been lost in our culture, mm-hmm. ace, like, you know, and, and how we don't really know what chocolate is. You know, it's, it's like a lot of products we eat these days. We've put so many fillers in it to create consistency that, you know, I think wine and maybe bourbon and some of those things are, you know, craft beer, certainly, but those only small industries still have this, um, desire of, preserving the the origins the flavor the, all of that so kind of got closer to the end of the course and i had come across a guy um out of eugene oregon who everybody kind of considers like the godfather of craft chocolate making and most of the large now large scale or even people like myself uh, people in the industry credit this man john nancy um with allowing people to get their start so i emailed him and i said hey this is what i want to do what equipment do I need? And so he emailed me back and I showed it to my wife and she said, well, I mean, we're never really going to know unless we just do it. So it wasn't like a huge, and that part of it wasn't a very huge investment for us at the time. So um, we bought the equipment and it showed up. I bought a small bag of about two bags of beans, one or three bags of beans, excuse me, one from Costa Rica, uh, five pound, all five pound bags, one from Venezuela and then one from Peru. And we started with the Costa Rican ones and I just kind of followed along in the process, at, you know, in as simplistic of a way as I could. We got to the end and Tiffany tried the chocolate and she goes, uh, oh my God, no, like you're really doing this now. Like, you're pulling. <laughs> and so we kind of joke about it now because I equate it to the situation of like when you have a child and they're like, oh, I want to, I want to be president. And you kind of like pat him on the head and you're like, oh yeah, for sure. Like you're all in but knowing that, you know, more likely than not, they're not going to be president. And she knows me well enough to know and her, her attitude and thought process was 100% spot on. Mm-hmm. But in the end, she tried the first bar and she was like, oh no, like this is a thing we're doing it. 
And I looked at her and I said, I knew that you were not 100%. She goes, well, no, of course not. <laughs> and so from there, it's just been pretty much full on. Um, and it, you know, yeah. So that answers, I guess, your first question. But Yeah. Um, you, you talked about so much in there that my clients struggle with. The, you talked about the spousal support. Like you need to get your spouse on board for whatever you want to do. And you, um, you had that tip was giving you space to figure it out for yourself, even though like that moment where you're like, Oh, I knew you weren't really on board. Yeah. She was kind of giving you the space to, to figure it out without, without judging you. Right. And I think a lot of my clients struggle with that. Um, I think for my clients, you know, a lot of my clients are women and they, they want um, their husbands to be their biggest cheerleaders. And that sure. doesn't, always work out for them. So I'm wondering, can you speak a little bit about how it was? Like you had this idea and Tiff was kind of like, okay, okay. How did it, can you, can you give any advice to people who are in that position? Because you need the support, but you don't necessarily need like permission or like cheerleading, but you need to kind of be on the same page, right? Oh yeah, for sure. And I think especially once, um, you know, I, I've learned through the mortgage business that and it's the same thing in any relationship when money starts to get involved. And I, I'm in our relationship. I'm the most guilty of this for sure. But whenever money gets involved, people get weird about it. Mm -hmm. And Tiffany's a very open book as far as that goes. And, you know, it's been a struggle in our relationship for me to let go of, I guess, my privacy about that. And it still is. And so this was kind of the first real opportunity. And we went through some struggles with it, certainly. Um, but I, I think, um, and I, I've learned... We've, we've learned this together and I mean, not to be super cliche, but a lot of this came to me through my practice of yoga is that you've got to be super conscious of the other person's, um, point of view and have an understanding of that. Even though you know that potentially in the end, it may not be the answer that you want. My wife knows me well enough to know that I rush into things and I'm like full bore and she knows to, be, you know, she knows to say, whoa. Like we need, you know, we need to put a, put a stop to this, but we work through it together. And, um, I think 90% of the time it's been, um, a lot of discussions about budget. Um, she's been very good about keeping me updated mm -hmm. and staying on top of me for receipts. And I, I think the important part is, you know, I, trying to make the other person, even if they're not, but make them feel like they're a part of all of the decision making mm -hmm. and knowing that you, there's going to be give and take. So, you know, I think, I, you know, there's steps that I probably wanted to take a hundred percent and she was like, well, no, let's just, let's just do it this way. And in the end, you know, everything has worked out. So, you know, as far as expenses go, you know, we've, we've started, we're, we're kind of growing small where instead of buying like large scale equipment, we've been able to just kind of build piece by piece and go from there. And I, I think probably, I think that's probably the most important thing is just knowing that in any conversation you're going to have with somebody else, you're not always going to get your way and you've got to be will and I, you've got to be willing to give as much as you're expecting the other person to give. And I think a lot of times we go into conversations, especially difficult ones already with our defenses up. Uh, yes. Yeah. And expecting the other person in, in um, putting expectations on what the other person's going to say before they have the chance to say it. Well, right. Because you guys know each other so well, like she knows that you would go whole hog if you could. And so she's there to kind of temper you, but she also wants to give you space. And then you go in knowing, Oh, we have to have this hard conversation. And she's probably going to say this. So we always go into these conversations with like an expectation. And if we can do it with a little more openness and teach each other how to have the conversations, like, just the other day, I had an opportunity to go on a large platform, but it was going to cost me money. Yeah. And I've never done this before. And I was very emotionally attached to the idea. I'm like, oh, this is a large platform and a lot of people can hear about what I do. And I'm launching this new program, blah, blah, blah. And I told John, and you know, John, he's like, yeah. <laughs> he comes at it from the business side. He's like, yeah, well, sure. what's the return on investment? How do you know if it's your target market? Like he's asking me all the questions that I would ask my clients, right? Like that I would want yeah. my clients to think about. But you but, don't ask yourself. Right. 
Yeah. Right. Like, and I just went along on, I wanted to go along on the emotional roller coaster. So we actually kind of had a conversation about in the future, what I would really love for him to do. I want him to bring his expertise, just like you want Tiff to bring your expert, her expertise. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't like, I wanted a moment to just kind of revel in the, the thing that I had had this amazing interview with this amazing woman. And it, she wanted to take it the next to, to the next step. Like that was really exciting. And so I said, okay, in the future, here's the recipe I'd like you to use. I'd like you to um, tell me that you're proud of me or that it's great or that you see how excited I am. Offer me your expertise and the, the logic. Go ahead and do your logic thing. Yeah. And then let's uh, end, the, end it with, um, you know, what, what's, what are our next steps? Cool. So kind of like which flavor of shit sandwich are you going to eat? But it has to be, you know, right. in a nice way. Yeah. I mean, so you like turkey, John likes roast beef. You're going to end up with a, you know, a nice sandwich with turkey and roast beef on it. Right. And you both have to be accepting of that. I mean, you know, and the, the other thing I think that we try very careful to not do, especially, well, in any aspect of our life in dealing with each other is to not allow the, like the emotions to escalate to a point where it's not manageable. So Again, that goes back to having the understanding of the other person's point of view. And, you know, like they might have had a really bad couple last days. And even though you're, they're your spouse, you don't fully know the full extent of it. So you sit down to talk about something that's a trigger and it blows up, mm-hmm. you know, so you just you just got to recognize those things, I think. And um, I think making the, making the spouse, especially when it's joint money that's involved, be as much or as little a part of it as they want to be. Right. And, and, and not only in your initial discussions, but keeping them up to date along the way and, right. you know, making them know that, you know, their help is needed if they or wanted, if they want to give it, whether it is or not. And it's so tricky because you're so emotionally tied to it and you don't want to ask permission. Like we're grown adults right. We don't right. Right. want to ask permission. And so and that's the hardest thing. thing. Oh, it's so hard. It's like, yeah. I want to talk to you about this thing and I want your input, but I don't want you to think I'm asking you permission. Right. It's such a killer. Yeah. yeah. And it's hard. And I think it's all just a framing in your mind. You know, I think, you know, my, some of, some of my vision paths for this um, business after, after talking through it with Tiffany, you know, calm and sometimes a little bit emotional. Um, have ended up, you know, far better in the end, even though we didn't go the route that I wanted to completely, the combination of the way the two of us worked it out has been far more beneficial than if I had tried to do all of this on my own. Yeah. That's a really, um, like mature and 10,000 foot view of the whole thing. You know, I mean, it, it, you got to look at, if you're starting a business, you've got to look at it for the long run. And, there's a lot of, you know, what we're noticing is there's a ton of minutia that needs to get taken care of. And especially when you're trying to make like a debut, it needs to get taken care of in a hurry. But at the same time, and she's a good reminder of this, you've also got to keep your eye on, you know, what's our plan down the road. Like I was trying to cram a million farmers markets and shows and she's like, whoa, there's no way we can do this. And I'm, I'm a guy that would fill my day from, 5.30 a.m. until, you know, 12.30 p.m. and just go, go, go. And that's not sustainable. It's not healthy. And so we had it, you know, we had a disagreement about it Saturday and we worked it out. And in the end, she was 100% right that, you know, you've got to look at this thing for the long term and having your spouses or a partner's outside view of what you're doing may not always be what you want to hear, right. but at the end of the day can be, I mean... Uh, one beyond 100% helpful. You know, Tiff has two really um, thriving studios. She's run, she started a business from nothing and she's, she's created something really incredible in this town. Um, She's run, she's running businesses like from all of the angles she's done that. And she's done that by herself. And my husband has done the same thing. Like he's a business guy, like his, I'm, I'm an English teacher, right? Like, but he's the business guy. And so I think it's hard when you have a dream, like you and I have a dream. Um, like I know that often John is right. Just like you're saying, you know, that Tiff 
is often right, but our egos and our emotions get in the way. And so I wonder if people like you and me could do a better job of asking ourselves, um, how is this person trying to help me? Because I often come at it like, oh, he's trying to hold me back. Or he, John is not trying to hold me back. Right. Why would, yeah. Tiff is not trying to hold you back. She's trying to keep you from burning yourself out, right? Yeah. Yeah. And John is trying to keep me from spending money that I don't want to spend on something that's not useful. So I, I think that, uh, that, that when we get hot about what our, what our spouses say, we have to remember how are they trying to help. Additionally, I think there are a lot of people out there whose spouses have opinions that don't necessarily, like if your husband is a teacher and he's giving you business advice, maybe he's not the guy you take business advice from. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's got to, you've got to like, play it out in your head a little bit more clearly. Yeah, I think I think you've got to understand the roles of the people around you for sure. And you've got to, I mean, obviously listen to everybody's opinions because everybody has one. Everybody has one. Um, but then also kind of evaluate your reaction to those opinions. You know, so when you're approaching what people are saying to you or who you're going to turn to, you first have to, you know, not to make another yoga reference, but you've got to look at your interactions with yourself Mm -hmm. you know, and the way that you respond to your own emotions. And then you've got to look at your interactions with the world around you. So how are those, you know, serving you? And, you know, if you know that the people around you, if they're people you hold close and value enough to listen to their opinion, that they're going to have your best interests at heart. And you may not agree with it. And in the end, their opinion may or may not be right. Um, but I think, yeah, your, your point of finding the right advisors, um, is certainly important and everybody serves a role. Um, and, and I've through this process, um, have been able to find, you know, somebody who's helping me really work on, the, like the manufacturing process and cause trying to find organization in that and make sure that we're not missing. Um, well, I'm not screwing up batches of chocolate, first of all, cause that gets very expensive and then losing track of what I roasted here and, what's in the grinder and what's ready to be molded. And, and then also tracking, all, especially as a new business, all, you know, we've got so many people contacting us for, to sell the bars wholesale in their stores, or I'm getting people contacting me to sell, um, as like corporate gifts, mm -hmm. things like that. So I don't, I know in the mortgage business, when you get a lead handed to you, yeah. you don't want to lose it or screw it up. And I, I equate this to much the same way and, and that we want to make sure that We've got the people around us, both of us, to help us um, fuel the business and not allow us to get bogged down in avenues that are not beneficial. Right, like stuff that you could hire out for. Potentially, yeah. Yep. Um, so I love that conversation. Thank you so much for like talking about that piece of it because a lot of people – won't talk about that. So I appreciate that. Um, but I know that you still have your full-time gig and I hear all of the pieces and parts like the administrivia and like the actual making of the chocolate and the behind the scenes and the opera, like all of it is so much branding and marketing. Um, what did you have to give up in order to put your energy toward making the stream real? Um, well, we've, we've had a lot, well, on the financial side, we've had a lot of budget talks. Um, and, you know, there's things that we both have had to cut out that we enjoy doing, you know, to free up, you know, I mean, $50 here, $20 there, $100 here. Because all of that, you know, all of that stuff makes a difference because there were things that, like, we knew in the back of our mind were going to pop up, but we just, you know, they just stay in the back of your mind. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's the first part. But, it, to directly answer your question as it relates to my career, my job, um, I haven't, I don't think I've given up anything. Um, I'm just having to work longer hours. So, um, what about in your free I'm, time? Because I know your free time was really important to you and your workouts and your yoga. Is anything yeah, so, well, we love to sail. Um, for instance, we, we've got our sailboat up for sale. So if anybody wants to buy a 28-foot wow. sailboat, you know, this is the guy to talk to. Um, so, you know, that we were, we were on it three times this summer, and it's been sitting on the mooring all season. So, you know, that's – it's just – it's not fair to the boat. It's kind of a waste of money for us. And so that was probably the biggest thing. Mm. You know, that's the biggest sacrifice because weekends are spent making the chocolate. I was away for two weeks in Oregon for an apprenticeship with a chocolate maker out there. 
um, the end of June. I was away for three days in the Hudson Valley at, um, everybody's going to laugh at this, but chocolate summer camp. Um, <laughs> that's really what it was called. And it was at like a kid's overnight camp. Um, and you know, so like, and then last weekend with the farmer's market, we were there Saturday and that was, you know, we left the house at seven thirty and didn't get back until quarter to three. Mm. And then Sunday, um, I squeezed in mowing the lawn and then it was off to the chocolate shop and I spent five hours there roasting to try to get, um, you know, stuff going for the week mm -hmm. to restock for this coming weekend and get the whole set. I mean, there's just a lot. So, so that sort of stuff we have had to give up. Um, but I also know that my, my job, you know, is a good, it's not, it's, you know, it's, it's a third of our income at least. Um, and it's important that I keep that going until we know if this is going to work, but we have sacrificed time together. We were just saying that this morning at breakfast that, you know, we don't, we didn't have much time together to begin with between Tiff's job at the yoga studio, my sort of crazy hours with originating mortgage loans. Right. And then I, I teach two days a week, one of which is a nighttime class. Right. And then we have my stepson, um, at least two nights a week and then every other weekend. So, you know, I mean, it's, I know people with multiple kids are just going to roll their eyes at me and say, Oh, I would love your life. But for me, it's a lot. Um, you know, so it has, we are still working to try to find the balance. The nice thing is, you know, the hours at the farmer's market, we're together and we do it as a family. So my stepson goes with us every weekend, um, even when we don't have him. And so we're together during that time and we just try to make as much time together as, as we can. I hear that it's a lot of everything and a lot of juggling, um, a lot of conversations and a lot of communication, which is what I think is vital. And I'm so thrilled for you guys that you're having those conversations. Um, are you having fun? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yes. Overall, 100%. I think it's been stressful and I can't speak for Tiffany, but I'm having a really great time. I think most of the time, um, <laughs> I look over there because she's in her office right now, but I think most of the time it is fun. It's been exciting for us. Um, the way that our friends and family have, you know, really supported us. We expected nothing less because we try to just keep amazing people around us. Mm -hmm. Um, but they have just been outstanding. I mean, really, we, it's brought both of us to tears multiple times. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's been a ball. I'm, it's not, it, it's not in a million years ever what I would have expected doing. It's totally no, a random no. thing. Um, this and wasn't on any of the list of things we ever all. talked about. No. On any of your little like four step thought, five step <laughs> thought process list that I avoided, like nobody's getting those. No, no, being a, being a chocolate maker never came up, but it's been exciting for us. It's been a learning process. And I think, um, at this point, now that we're kind of out selling, it's been really great to educate people and see people. It's just chocolate's one of those things. And this is what I wanted. Like we wanted something that would make people happy and that we would be really happy doing. Like I could do any, probably a number of other things, but you know, when I would go, people would say, well, what do you do? Well, I do mortgages and it's wow. oh, cool. That's nice. See you later. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'd get a, I would get a, Oh, where do you do that? Oh, I work for my family. Oh, really? Out. Don't eat that. But chocolate was one of those things where when we started talking about it, it made us, it got us excited. Mm -hmm. And then as we started tasting all the different chocolates that we tasted from around the world, good, bad things with bars with things in it, bars not, we love visiting other chocolate factories. Like if we're in cities that have them. Um, and so, yeah, it's totally something that we really love and we've really, and it, and it, the best part about it for us is that when we see people tasting our chocolate, just like the smile that it brings to their face and then the, the questions. And my favorite is when people come up because most of our chocolates are dark chocolate. I'm working on our first milk chocolate. It's in the grinder right now. Mm -hmm. We have a dark milk chocolate, which is kind of a crossover. I kind of say it's like the gateway drug to dark chocolate. Um, but um, so most of our bars are dark chocolate. So my favorite is when people come up. And they kind of look at us and they're like, oh, do you have any milk chocolate? I'm like, well, no, most of it's dark. Oh, I don't eat dark chocolate. And I'm like, oh, okay, game on. Let's do this. And then they try one and they're like, oh, my God, this is, you know, this is amazing. It's so creamy. It's so, oh, and the, the strawberry flavor, the caramel, the toffee, 
the grapefruit, whatever, depending on the bar they're tasting, that makes it, you know, all of like the, the stuff that is, you know, like this morning we spent an hour sitting down on a website figuring out like bubble wrap sizes and box sizes because we'd like to get the retail part of our website up, you know, ASAP. Damn. That stinks. And it's, you know, we have no background in that, so we don't know anything about that. Right. We didn't know anything about chocolate making to begin with, except for the fact that, you know, it's good for you and we like it. Um, but we've, you, you know, you just figure it out and you make lists and lists for your lists and you just, you, you know what, you know, people say, well, I don't know anything about, it. I love this, but I don't know anything about it. The biggest thing, and this is what Tiffany said, research it. Figure it out. Like Google it, YouTube it. The videos, they're all out there. Like research your life out of it and then determine if after you've done all the research, like the number of like boring, technical, way over my head papers I read during this course, like that were, you know, so long and such small like print. It was, but at the end of all of that, I was still like, we're doing this. That's, that says everything. I was going to ask you, what advice would you give to a creative who wants to bring their idea to life? And you literally just yeah, that's said it. everything. Do it, try it, research it, ask for help, know that parts of it are going to suck. Like that's, it's not all fun, but I, when you watch this recording, I want you to see how friggin' lit up you are. Yeah, because you like, saw me when the life was sucked out of I me. So. Know. <laughs> I um, know. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing. We're in the age of information, and I think um, it's out there. And the other thing that, at least for our industry, which has been absolutely amazing, is the people that we've spoken to, I think out of maybe, I'm going to say, I'm going to say close to 60 chocolate makers that I've met from around the world at this point. There has been one that was not nice. Everybody in some form or another has been, and, and, and I've, and I've formed relationships with probably five different ones where I email and this poor woman, Mackenzie from map chocolate in Eugene, Oregon. She is a godsend to me. And I idolize her because not only did she allow me two weeks of apprenticeship time with her um, and just nonstop, I felt like my stepson just questions, 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 but it's been worse since I got back. I'm like all these questions. Hey, can you look over this? How did you do this? What's your, and she find those people and they're out there and they might not be here in your local city, but if you do some research and you reach out to people, um, they want there are to people out there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right. It, the information's out there. That was the best thing my wife could have said was, you know, is there a course? Is there any place you can turn to to get more information? That was, you know, the biggest piece of information because there you're, that's like dipping your tiny little baby toe into the puddle and it's n typically not a big expense right. and you just need to educate yourself before you decide that this is what you want to do or take a leap from leaving another career. And if the idea won't leave you alone, you know that it's it's something to Right do. on. Yeah. If, if it's something that you just continually get excited about, I mean, any new idea is going to be excited when you first think about it. Yeah. You know, like to me, I think at the beginning of every growing season, I'm like, oh man, a vegetable garden would be amazing. <laughs> I would love it. But it, it's just not an idea that sticks with me. I yeah. built the vegetable gardens. Like I literally built two of them. And the most I've gotten out of them in two seasons is like one plant's worth of tomatoes. We had a couple of cucumbers, but that was it. How can people find you and your chocolates? So right now, um, so we're, we're recording this middle of September. So for the next four weekends, we're at the Casnovia Farmer's Market. And then by, I'm hoping either the end of this week or at the latest, the end of next week is my goal. But I'm hoping sooner rather than later, we'll have the retail part of our website up, which is nostalgiachocolates.com. So chocolate with an S. Dot com And we have the website up already. Awesome. Um, so people can check us out there. We're on Instagram and yeah. Facebook and Stalja Chocolates for both of those. Um, and if anybody has any questions, you can just email nostalgiachocolates at gmail.com and one of us will get back to you. But, um, yeah. And, you know, as far as the Syracuse area goes, we're hoping, I mean, we'll ship, but we're hoping we can either have 
like a pickup um, situation at some point. We don't have a storefront yet, um, but we're kind of moving in that direction. We're in a spot now where we're producing, but we're kind of moving um, a little bit in that direction. So stay tuned for that. Wow. I'm so impressed. I'm so proud of you. I love seeing you so happy. I'm really well, happy for of, you guys. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, and Jen, a lot of it has, to, I mean, oh. a lot of it has to do with the work that we did. I know you say no, but I mean, it, it truly does. The thought process is that we worked through and, um, you know, I brought you on to kind of help me fix my mortgage process, but Lord knew we had much deeper processes to fix, you know, and I think, I, you know, and that, that was 100% invaluable for me and my outlook on a lot of things. You know, I'd, I'd worked hard to get out of my mental rut of um, absorbing other people's negativity around me for a long time. And I was starting to fall back into that. And, you know, I mean, I have a wonderful wife and the work that you and I did together, um, you know, just reshaped my mind. And I was like, life's too short and there's too much enjoyment. If I'm going to have to work, I want to be working, doing something that I can enjoy doing and like feel like I'm bringing some real benefit to other people's lives. And, and that's really where a lot of it, a lot of this all stemmed from. So honored that you said that. Thank you. And I'm so proud of you. And so I have tried your chocolates at Tiffany's birthday party. And like, I would have just stayed around that dining room table all night. <laughs> Thank you. Know? you. <laughs> and I don't even have the palate that I know you must have. So I, and I still, I, they were delicious. So um, I'm going to drop all of the information of how to get in touch with nostalgia chocolates. Um, if you can get to Tyler's class, he gives a really amazing class Tuesday nights at five 30, right? At Oh yeah. The downtown and uh, Mondays lunchtime into it. Thank yeah. you for that plug. Yeah. I love, I love your class. I, I'm always, believe me, I wish I could make your class. Um, but I want you to see this man as somebody <laughs> who was not happy and look at him now. Look at what he's bringing to life because he, he can do it. I can do it. You can do it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Catherine, Jen. Thank you. thank you so much. This was so much fun. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay.